So ladies and gentlemen, a Sunday, uh, January 1st, 2012. And uh, what I'm going to show you now today, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to tell you I'm the Bible expert, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm the Bible expert because I understand how the words in the Bible represent the pictures or pictographs on the $1 bill. And I'm going to prove it to you now that the, what do you see on your screen, the bull, who's always, you know, he's always in a lick in his lips, like a calf or an oxen. I'm going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that that bull, she's going to be on the end of the $1 bill, ladies and gentlemen. Because, ladies and gentlemen, whoever make of the Bible and the words in the Bible also make of the $1 bill uh, 7,000 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. And what do you see before you on your screen? is a perfect representation of a bullock or an oxen and or a calf that is described in the book of Revelation verse 4 chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 this is the bullock or calf or oxen that is one of the protector and angels on the end of the one dollar bell spoken about in chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 if you'll notice it has a snout if you'll notice it has a tongue that typically is depicted as a bull or an oxen or a calf and they're always licking their lips then if you'll notice the wings which later become the six wing seraphim appear to be the horns of a bull and now I'll show you the horns of a bull and the tongue lashing out of a bull's mouth you see the tongue and you see the horns and once again you see the tongue and you see the horns because ladies and gentlemen whoever wrote the Bible also created the one dollar bill on the same day approximately seven thousand years ago according to the pictography on the one dollar bill and now I will show you a picture of a normal one dollar bill simply folded and this you can do in the privacy of your own home if you take the bill and make a slight crease in it you too with a pair of glasses or a magnifying glass can see the snout of a bull or a calf of an oxen on the end of any one dollar bill it was placed there for a specific reason but now I'm going to show you the face of the sixth wing seraphim that has eyes before and eyes behind because now the bullock takes on the form of a sixth wing seraphim if you'll notice when you zoom in you'll notice if you stop your video which I implore you to stop the video often you'll notice immediately coming from the beams from the eyes are six individual lines representing the sixth wing seraphim now also that sixth wing seraphim is described in chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 of the book of Revelation along with of course the eagle which is also part and parcel of this pictograph that is the eagle there are four beasts so so now we covered the eagle the sixth wing seraphim and the bullock which only leaves the lion of the tribe of Judah which is described as this aspect of the one dollar bill when we invert it and make it into the vertical position this word one becomes a replication or a representative of Jesus aka Jesus was the lion of the tribe of Judah thus accomplishing the pictography that represents the four beasts in relationship to the words in Revelation 4-7 describing a bullock, an oxen or a calf, the sixth wing seraphim, the eagle, and effectively 
the fourth beast known as the lion, which in this case is Jesus of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the Catholic Church, and more specifically the Vatican, never wants you to understand. They never want you to understand that the Bible and the one dollar bill with the 3,300 pictographs that exist on the front and back or obverse and reverse of the one dollar bill were all created by the same being 7,000 years ago before the Great Pyramid of Giza was built. And that, ladies and gentlemen, comes to you from Michael Afazio, from a.k.a. Hoodwinked by an Angel, who is, ladies and gentlemen, a Bible expert, ladies and gentlemen, January 7th, 2012. You heard it here first, folks. God day to you all.